Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be doing an early lineup build for the NBA slate for this evening. Now again, um, NBA, more than almost any other sport, is one that is, is less conducive to an early lineup build with respect to showing you exactly what you should play. Um, however, it is still uh, very useful with respect to honing process and, and messing around with a couple of things. So. Um, I'm going to do it anyway, and uh, we are going to be going, obviously, we're going to do a full deep dive a little bit later, and then also as we get closer to lock, we'll do more kind of you know, final looks and lineup builds and things like that. But I still think it's important to uh, get practice building lineups, uh, showing you how to use the tools available to you um, in, in, a, in the hunt to continue to build process and to make your process as, as complete yet as quick as possible. And we can also experiment with a couple of things as well. So the first thing I want to talk about today is just kind of how to, how to read the board. You know, we're going to read the board and then we're going to build lineups having read the board. And when I mean reading the board, I mean just taking a look at our projection set and seeing what looks good. Now again, we're not going to go through game by game as far as this video is concerned. And we'll do that in another thing, another video where Bobby and I literally go through game by game. But this is just literally taking a look at the projection set and seeing what to do with it once you have it. Um, now, again, disclosure, if this is going to be completely different by the time lock happens, because there's going to be guys ruled out, there's going to be projection updates, things like that. But I think it is important to, to figure out kind of how to read the board. Um, so the first thing that I, you have to figure out, I figure out is, is how to rank these guys in the first place. So, so I've given you guys the true DFS projection set here. So what, what do you do with all this? Um, you know, there's a couple of ways that you can rank these guys. Um, sometimes I just like to rank them by fantasy points to see what's up. Like when you see that one guy is you know, 11 points higher than the next player, and then Giannis, for example, is seven points higher than the next one, you know, it might be a decent idea to try to get to these guys because raw points is, you know, does matter to some degree. And when you have that big of a gap, it is it is worth kind of ranking them by fantasy points from time to time just to do that. Uh, the other two main ways to rank them is by points per dollar, which certainly makes a lot of sense. And the other is some sort of value ranking that mixes fantasy points and points per dollar. Because if you just rank them by fantasy points, you're just going to get the highest price guys. If you just rate them by points per dollar, you're almost always going to get cheaper guys over more expensive guys. Um, so all sites have this sort of value ranking, you know, Roto Grimes has their own, Osimo has their, Stokas has their, they all their own. And this is kind of my own, um, that my own formula that kind of combines these two metrics. Um, and, and when you, when you sort by say sheets value score, here's a couple of things to keep in mind. Now, this is completely, uh, only has to do with my site, with, true, with TrueDFS's site and my rankings. But when you have a Sheets value score of over 200, that's extremely strong. Okay, And it's one that really should be respected. And, and you almost never see something like this. You know, when you have a 240, I mean, it becomes a really high priority play. Let's put it that way. Now, again, there, there are other things that you can talk about, why, how the projections got here and whether there's ceiling involved and how construction works or whatever. But as far as just figuring out what types of priorities you, you need to, to have, when you see a, a sheet value score over 200, that's really, really big. Um, now for points per dollar, if you want to play a guy just on points per dollar, you usually want to have at least 6X. Um, normally, you can find guys that are 7X or higher on, you know, on big slates once you know, some injury news happens. But to, to rate a guy just on points per dollar, 6X is usually something that's considered good value. So when I take a look at the board here, I will see that that nothing really shows up as great value. So now you have kind of this weird situation where you want to play this high price player, yet you don't really have the value to make that work. Um, now, usually, usually, I mean, I, I it re really is a matter of taste. I will, actually, it isn't a matter of taste. There is an answer but I don't know exactly what it is before every slate as to whether you're supposed to, you know, just play the bad value along with the super high price player or 
just ignore the super high price, price player in the name of pretty much a middling build so that you don't have to worry about hitting you know the bad value. Um, and when you're talking about hand building lineups, this is the, a major thing you have to consider on pretty much every slate. So on a slate like this, it, your lineups are either going to be something like Jokic and you know whatever cheapos you can invent to make it work, like Corey Kispert. Like normally, five point two seven x is not really great value, but when you're really trying to cram in a twelve eight guy, you have to make some concessions. You know, uh, uh, Brandon. Podzimeski, 4,400, 5.2x here. It's, it's not great, but it's not bad either. You know, anything really over 5x is in play here. Uh, Powell, 4,100, uh, stuff like that. Um, so the other thing that I like to do is this kind of little checkpoint. So to find out again, you know, good plays, and then we're going to figure out what to do with them later, is you rate guys by first by sheets value score. And what you're trying to do is find the cheapest guys you can that rate high in sheets value score because sheets value score is 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 geared towards higher price guys in general. So if you could find lower price guys there, you know these are going to be kind of priorities. Um, and so what I'll look at, you know, at first is you top two of the cheap cheaper players are Sangoon and Van Vliet. And coincidentally, or possibly not coincidentally, they're on the same team. And the good news is, is they usually correlate pretty well. You know, you, one's not taking the other one shot necessarily. So you could play Van Vliet and Sangoon together if you want to try to stack the game. So um, that's the first thing I'll notice is that Van Vliet, Sangoon, they rate highly in sheets value score, reasonably priced, uh, and they're on the same team. Then you look down a little bit, you see Kawhi and... Boy, oh boy, uh, now you're starting to get a little bit of a, of a game stack here, right? Um, because he's part of the same game and he kind of fits in the same mold. Or Paul George, you know, he's one of the cheaper guys that are up here. Or James Harden. So, you know, already this, this slate is kind of, from a hand-building perspective, is taking some pretty good shape here. Um, just just raking these guys, just rating these guys in this way. Um, not to mention the fact that, if I'm not mistaken, it's the latest game, or at least one of the latest games, which is also something good because ooh, it's 8 p.m. There's one. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. So, it, uh, you know what? That's why I stay. Houston is not in the Clipper game. So it's not a game stack game. I apologize. That's one of the one of the downfalls of not having the, the game set up. But what is good is that the Houston guys are in the late game. So you, know, you can adjust. You can pivot if you need to. The Clippers guys, like we mentioned, is in at least an eight o'clock game. It's not in one of the seven o'clock games. So that sort of helps. Um, all right, back to the to the board here. Let's uh let's rate these guys by point per dollar and do kind of the opposite, meaning that you rate the guys point per dollar, and now you're looking for the highest price guys. Um, because point per dollar, as I alluded to earlier, typically favors the um the the cheapos. So what we're trying to find are, are point per dollar plays that are pretty expensive. And once again, we're getting Sangoon and Van Vliet. So these two are pretty clearly the, the elite plays so far. Uh, and then you get Michael Porter Jr. And then Mark Williams and Aaron Gordon. And then also Kevon Looney is a good play here. Um, well, actually, Kevon Looney is a little cheap. So we have Tom of Van Sangoon. Van Vliet, Porter, Jokic, if you can get him, Aaron Gordon, these types of guys. And once again, Kawhi Leonard is showing up again. So um, it looks as though we can play a middling range build if we don't play Jokic. Well, obviously, right? <laughs> but we can do it with good plays. Um, so again, as far as a process goes, this is the first thing I, I would look at. And what I would try to do is you know, pull up pull up the DraftKings lobby and see what that kind of lineup will look like. And we're going to put this in the Saber Sim. We're going to build actual lineups in a, in, a, in a minute. But let's um, let's see what something like that would look like. So we'll start off, like I said, with the, uh, the two what I consider, at least for now, the best plays. That would be 
Van Vliet and uh, Sengun. And then the next guys I saw were either, right, let's take a look, Porter, Gordon, Porter, Gordon, maybe Kawhi. Porter, Gordon, maybe Kawhi. Porter showing up here. So let's let's see if we can get all these guys in the way we want. So first of all, what's good about Porter is that he is uh, small forward eligible. That's usually a weak position. Might make things a little easier. So now once we do this, we have 5,500 a man left. And so we really now have to go back into points per dollar and see what, what we can get our, get our hands on here. There is the Kevon Looney play. And now, as I mentioned, we might have to play Corey Kispert anyway, you know, if, if we want to get to these guys. Um, if we want to play, say, Gordon from that Denver game, let's not play two guys from Denver quite yet. Let's Let's pick one of the Clippers. Um, first, I mean, if you played Kawhi Leonard, going back to San Antonio, by the way, um, it still becomes a little kind of challenging. Okay. The one thing I will say is that one of the guys that we mentioned a couple of times, uh, Kavon Looney, as a value play, he is in that late game and could so we can sort of stack this a little bit uh other point per dollar plays which i kind of uh alluded to here oh is the 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 brandon dude from golden state all right so he's in that game so let's put him in see what that looks like obviously these are not the top guys from Golden State, but whatever. They're making kind of like the stack work a little bit. And so at 4,900 a man, then we're now, you know, what we can do, we could play some other decent point per dollar plays like Reggie Jackson from that Denver game. That you could do. So now we're getting two guys from the Denver, Denver side, which is fine. Two sides from Houston. Two guys from Golden State. One Clipper. And then we just need a 4,800. And there's plenty of one-offs you can play. There's uh, Koulibaly. You got him. That would probably be the best one. And if I'm not mistaken, oh, no, he's not from that same game. So you could do something like this. And I will tell you this, this lineup is going to be, I think, pretty low on. Uh, I don't think a lot of people are going to go exactly this way. Um, and this isn't bad, actually. As a matter of fact, just for funsies. We're going to save this one as my, um, as my dummy lineup. We're, we're going to probably play 50 in the, uh, in the fadeaway. Probably play at least one in the splash. Um, and we'll play one in the showtime at least, right? One in the showtime over here. So we're going to keep this as my, you know, again, it's not going to be the actual line at the end, but we'll um, we'll save it at least for now. Okay, so now let's do, um, let's go into Saber Sim and build there and see if there's any difference. Um, let's see if we can get, well, you want to know what, before we do that, you want to see what a, um, what a, uh, what a stars and scrubs lineup would look like. Like, let's say we did want to go and play Jokic. Like what what that would mean? I see already we have to go fifty three hundred a man with very minimal value. So we really just have to rate these guys by points per dollar and just do our best. And I promise you, we're going to have to play like Kispert, like for openers. So we'll put him in, and we'll just see what a lineup like this looks like. Well, let's put him in small forward for now. And again, we're probably we're actually we're not going to play this actual line, but just it gives you a good idea of what it's going to need to play stuff like this. Uh, Koulibaly again. We're going to get back to uh, to Brandon P. It's going to be really difficult 
to get Jokic in, unless better value shows up. Brandon over here. We can go back to Reggie Jackson, I guess. Uh, that would work. Barely. She has not true. Reggie Jackson would work. Now we're at 6,000 in Manor. Oh, we can make a play. Like, we could probably get our top guy in. Like, if we want to play Sangoon, let's see. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We can definitely do this. You might not even have to play Corey Kisper. You might be able to even play something like, like Miles Bridges if you wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. But hold on, let me see if there's a way we could avoid playing Corey Kisper. Not that there's anything specifically against him, but yeah, I mean, we could play Koulibaly if we want. I don't mean he's necessarily a better player than Kisper, but what I'm saying is you don't have to go down to 3,800 to do this. And then other 4,400 guys, mm, play Norman Powell. That's a guy we didn't really talk about. At, at 4,100, he rates pretty well. And then any $5,500 forward you like, um, ooh, you can almost get to Jabari Smith. You know, you could do that. You could play Jabari Smith and then go back to Kisper. So, yeah, you can do this. You know, um, is there any $4,500 guy that I like that I didn't play already? Not really. So we'd have, we'd have, to, we'd have to screw around a little bit. Um, but you save one hundred dollars. We can't only save one hundred. What we have to do is save more and play Kispert. God help us. And then we can upgrade somewhere, so we don't have to play. I don't think we have to play Brandon in this one. We have Reggie over there already. Oh, he's playing Mike Conley, for example, if we want. So yeah, so we can do this. We we can play Jokic if we want. Oh, point guard uh, is Reggie somehow shooting guard? That would be nice. Oh, he's a point guard too. How about uh, Powell? Can Powell be a shooting guard? Powell's got to be a shooting guard, right? Powell could be a shooting guard, and then who do we say Conley? Not the greatest lineup in the world, but this will work. So we'll save this one as well. Just something to do. All right, so now let's go into Saberson and see what we would get there. So all we do is just upload our projections and just kind of let Saberson do its thing. Exclude the list of players, save here. We'll build, let's build 50 lineups. Okay, let's go 50. And then what we're going to do is just you know, so that we we don't forget to do this later, we will upload our entries from the contests and save the contest simulation data so that if we do decide to run a contest sim, we will have the, uh, the uh, prize money in there. We will have the number of players in there and things like that. So the, you can you can do it either way. I mean, you could do the Jokic, you could play Jokic, or you can not play Jokic, right? Um, I'm just curious which which route Saberson will have us go. The Saberson, again, the way I'm building now, we're going to rate him by Saber score, which does take into account some degree of ownership fade and some degree of, 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 of upside and things like that. So if we did it this way, there would actually not be any... Um, Jokic. It's all these guys I mentioned. Sangoon, Kispert, Porter, Mark Williams, actually. Van Fleet, Gordon, like almost no Jokic at all. Right? If we look for Jokic, we'd be getting, even at 11% ownership, only 12%. Now, again, lineups could, you know, could change, but let's, 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 let's save this, because this is actually probably very similar to what I built, right? It's got these same guys, but it did go through a little bit more of the um, of the Saber Sim, you know, uh, uh, algorithm. So it's kind of justifying it a little bit more. So let's sa let's save these to the contest. 
upload the entry file. Give us something to save. And we'll save these into, I will save into all of them for now. I mean, this is not, here, let's save these all for now. Oops. Ooh, let me do it. Save all these. Uh, duplicate, which should be fine. All right, so save them. Now, just so I have it, we're going to add contest sim. I don't think we're going to run these now. Maybe I'll, I'll run one now just to show you how to do it again. But save settings. And then what this is doing, those of you that are new to this, this is saving the contest data of the exact contest that we're in so that when we run a contest sim, uh, Saber Sim allegedly or purportedly is going to suggest specific lineups for the specific contest based on the presumed ownership and lineup fields uh, and, you know, and field lineups of those particular contests. Before I do that, let's, I always remember, have to remember to change, to update my lineups here. Always, whenever, I, I think whenever you change anything, it's always good to just go in and change them in DraftKings. So in case you forget, in case something happens. Um, but just, all right, I'll, I'll do one. I'll do, I'll do the contest sim for now. And then we will just use the, the fadeaway. And see, I want to see if there's any difference. And that's one of the reasons I like to run the contest in people early is to find out where the difference is between the, the straight up, you know, saber score builds and the um and the uh the contest sim builds. The concept's uncomplete. Oh, you wonder why? Because there's one see when I get that error, usually it's because one of these has not been kind of loaded by saber sim yet. So let's just do the fade away. Sometimes you get that error, and I keep forgetting to put that into the uh, into support. Maybe the entire uh, contest sim uh, database is kind of slow right now, so maybe maybe it's not a good time to even do it. Oh, there it is. So let's just see what does these lineups look like. Now we go into NBA fadeaway. We'll sort by risk adjusted ROI, and what you do see is definitely some differences, right? When you actually are putting lineups in that consider the ownerships of other players, now we're getting stuff like Deshaun Tate, a hundred percent. You know, we're still getting the Brandon guy, but I'm, I, I imagine it's because he's only 1% owned. And and so what, what this is showing is that what the contest sim thing is doing, it is doing its job. You know, it's trying to find lineups that have leverage off of, off of lineup fields. And so the question is going to be, do you trust the ownership? <laughs> like, do you trust the ownership of, of the 1% ownership of, uh, Actually, not even. Like right here, it's actually projecting an ownership of 0 0.06. That's an important point is that we are not using the contest sim stuff for, for um, SaberSim does not use the ownerships that we put in. It's its own. Now, again, you could change that. This is getting a little bit too advanced, but but um, but you can change the, the, the field lineups. Right now, it's using the flagship MME, which is whatever, but you could change it to say our build. Like we built 5,000 lineups. So if you want to run it like against ourselves, we could do that and see what difference that is. I mean, it's got to be a big difference, right? If it's, uh, but actually it might not even matter because if, if Deshaun Tate is not showing up in any lineups, what's going to happen is that he's going to get cramped. And maybe that's not the worst, the worst idea in the world. But again, this is what, it's funny. This is when I see the, different results from the simulations, you know, it, it makes me, you know, makes me think about how far they have to go. I'm not saying they're bad. Okay, they are bad, but they're bad, like compared to what they're gonna be in two years, okay? They're amazing compared to what they were three months ago. And I think that if you ask the Saberson guys, they would probably agree. Um, so let's run it again. 
I guess. What's the better way to do that? It should be different. Like it shouldn't give me a hundred percent tape if I'm going to compare it to our to our build one as opposed to the flagship lineups. We'll see. Yeah, it looks like it's struggling a little bit. So uh I'm gonna uh pass on, on applying the contest sim stuff to this particular slate right now until I know until I feel as though it's getting organized. So like here, for example, like Jeff Green has a zero flagship ownership. So that means that it's going to give you like a whole bunch of Jeff Green because they're projecting him to be like zero percent owned. So remember, you know, it's it's garbage in, garbage out, right? If you don't have good ownerships for these things or good field lineups, then it's going to be, I don't want to say useless in the wrong, in the wrong way, but it's certainly not going to be accurate. I would actually prefer to, um, let's see something. Now, even if we did this, this is really weird. It's still getting me the same type of stuff. So I don't know. I, 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 I decline. Anyway, uh, that's my own, that's that's what I would do. That's my process for today's NBA slate. Uh, for today's slate, I probably would go with the with the saber score builds, um, as opposed to trying to get cute with these weird contest sims, especially with the Deshaun Tate and Jeff Green hundred percent ownership deal. Um, but anyway, uh, that's all I have. Uh, not going to have time to get to FanDuel, but uh, hopefully that helps. Any questions? Feel free to. I was about to say leave them here, but I probably won't see them. Uh, you know what? If you have questions, join the True DFS Discord because there's a lot of people in there that would help you if I'm not around as well. Um, you could leave a message here in the YouTube, but I don't see that all too often. Um, that'll that'll do it. I feel free to like, subscribe, join the True DFS uh, premium channel, join the True DFS website, get more content and everything like that. Good luck, everybody.